Today we're looking at loops in Julia. I'm trying to learn Julia as a programming language. I've been programming for about 15 years myself and I'm trying to expand my knowledge in particularly data analysis and Julia is the tool I'm using to do that. So today I'm going to learn loops and share as I learn uh, with the community out there so that uh, you guys can learn along with me as well. So please stay tuned uh, while I go through the different for and while loops and the syntax that's used in Julia. Today I'm using the REPL to go through the syntax, but if you follow along the video series, eventually I'm going to get to writing scripts and programs in Julia that should evaluate on their own rather than using the REPL. Uh, and that way we can develop, I'm, I'm working towards developing a dashboard. So uh, let's take a look at the for loop first, <clears throat> pardon me. Now, looking through the documentation, it says to use a syntax like this for a for loop, for i equals one through, let's say 10, <coughs> pardon me. Let's evaluate that one to 10 first, because this should be, this should give us a list of each number, one to 10. Oh, that's interesting. So Julia doesn't evaluate the list one to 10 until we, Un until it's run. Uh, so how, I wonder how we can extract the first, let's try that syntax and see if it works. No, okay. Get index, uh, get index one to 10, two. Yeah, okay, interesting. So I wonder if the mistake was here. Okay, so what I've just done there is to see how, to investigate how Julia represents this one to 10 as a number. Uh, does it evaluate it all at the start? Does it evaluate it when it's called? But what, I couldn't use this array syntax I'm used to from other programming languages. Instead, Julia recommended using this get index uh, on our list of numbers to get the position at a certain index. Uh, it's, it's just for example that this get in, um, what I'm doing is listing out the one to 10 numbers and then selecting the one at number five so if we had a list of numbers 100 to 200 and we took the 10th position, we should get 109. So what if we take the zeroth position then? Error, okay. So there's no, so that get index is uh, the first position must be one then. So we do position one, we get 100. Interesting. Okay, so let's get back to our for loop. So for i equals one to 10, so i in this case is our one to 10, uh, we do, let's do some operation on i, and we type in, Julia syntax is to type in an end at the end. So there we go, one through 10. What I might do, I wonder if I can get index. Hmm, let's do, no, okay. Uh, so that, yeah, that's, that's how you do a for loop in Julia. Let's look at the while loop as well. So the recommended syntax is to do i equals one while i is less than or equal to five. We do our print again of i. And now it says that we have to increment the global variable like this. So I wonder what happens if we, the Julia syntax says we have to do this, i plus equals one end. So that's of course what happens. But what happens if we don't use this globe, this word global? What happens if we just do i plus equals one, nothing? No, oh, I, I wonder why that happened. Oh, because I didn't set i back to zero. Okay, now we do that and we get i not defined. So I mustn't exist inside the while loop. It must be some sort of scope thing where if we want to modify I within, with, within the while loop, we have to refer to the global variable I in, in the Julia REPL. Don't I? If you're curious about more detail on what that means, please leave a comment below and I'll do some investigation and try to get back to you. Uh, in the meantime, we just remember that if we want to modify a variable outside the loop, we need to uh, use this global keyword. And, oh, that while and for loops are the two loop ways in Julia, it seems. Uh, we can do, oh, we can do elements. 
Ah, okay. Let's let's do the element one. So we can do this is a for in loop. Uh, it's a quite it's a usually important feature of modern languages, particularly when you're uh, working with strings. So we can do rather than worry about array indexing. So for example, having the i and then having the i here and doing while i. Anyway, rather than worry about array indexing, let's let's do for uh, string in let's make it a list of list of words. Now, if we print S, we should get each of these list of words. Yeah, that's an interesting way of doing it. So that's a for in loop. Another feature that Julia has, uh, I, I like using for in loops. It's a good way to iterate through an array without knowing how, how long the array is without worrying about arithmetic. Uh, I'm sure it will work with, yeah, multi-dimensional arrays should work as well. Can I construct one? Can I construct a multi-dimensional array? List test, test, test. Uh, okay, now I've forgotten how to construct multi-dimensional arrays. Let's do, uh, how did we do it before? Nope, what did we do? Semicolons? I don't remember how to construct multi-dimensional. Ah, there we go. So it has to be semicolons rather than commas. I don't quite remember. As you can see, I'm still learning Julia myself. And uh, hopefully you can avoid some of my mistakes. List of words, test, test, test. Okay. Uh, why don't we see what happens? if we just have this matrix rather than have rather than have s list out in the for loop okay so it does column fir first column and then second column so it doesn't do list test of test words test it does list of words and then test 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 okay so that's how uh, for loops work in julia uh, do we have any other cool features break okay we can do break uh, for, let's do this, for i equals 1 to 10, if i mod 3, I've forgotten, forgotten what that is, does not equal 0, continue, and print line, i end, okay. Oh yes, okay, so I, I mod 3 is what you'd expect. Uh, so 3 mod 3 should be 0. Pardon me. Okay, now you might notice here that it, it looks kind of, if, you've, if you're used to programming in a different language, it looks kind of strange that everything's aligned once here on the left. So let's try, let's try the same, now that we're introducing some more complicated control flow, what if we use the tab character to Evaluate the same, to write the same statements, continue, and that print line i, and, oh, good, okay. So only, so what this is saying is, if i mod three does not equal zero, we continue. Otherwise, uh, and then the control flow continues to print line i. So this means that if uh, wherever i is not divisible by three, the loop will allow, the loop will move on to the next one. So that, that's continue. If we change the continue to break, it means that nothing should be printed because as soon as the first break is appeared, the loop exits. Yep. So continue goes on to the next iteration of the loop, whereas break exits from the loop completely. Good. So th this is sort of the sort of syntax I'd expect from a any uh, modern programming language. 
So Julia is perfectly cap capable of handling four loops, while loops, uh, four in loops, and as well as continue and break. Uh, I don't see anything particularly sta that stands out here. Though if you're interested in some of the more quirky features I found of Julia, hit subscribe and I'll make a video on that in the future. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.